again. Hmm, it would appear that uh, our old mate Ben Emlyn Jones has been flogging a dead horse with regard Donald Trump being the disclosure president. Uh, this is from, uh, oh, for God's sake, USA Today. I hate these online newspapers, they're always. It takes forever to scroll through because it's continually loading up commercials, so don't bother with USA Today on the, uh, looking at it on the internet, it's a waste of time. USA Today, June the 15th, 2019. Trump got a briefing on UFOs, but said he doesn't particularly believe in them. Okay. So Donald Trump is not going to, well, there's nothing to disclose, is there? But Donald Trump isn't going to be disclosing anything. So poor old Ben, he was shouting, shouting at the top of his voice, Trump, Trump, Trump! Waving the uh, waving the American flag, you've got it assaulted, supporting uh, Donald Trump because he thinks Donald Trump's going to reveal everything the um, uh, uh, the U.S. knows about UFOs and ET. Trump says he doesn't particularly believe in them. Now uh, there's a little bit of footage here from the uh, you know the Navy pilots. Now, um, what we see in the footage is not what they described. They say the thing was darting around all over the place, performing these fantastic manoeuvres. They couldn't get a lock on it. But uh, in the footage, we see the object stays in the crosshairs uh, for, the, for the entire length of the video, and it appears to be in a gentle turn. It's not darting all over the place. Uh, I don't know whether it's worth playing a bit of that, but... There you go. There you go, it's locked on. And it's not darting all over the place, is it? That's in a gentle turn to the left. You can see the plane is banking to the left with the artificial horizon. Yeah. So, okay, so that's, uh, that's nothing whatsoever. Certainly does not tally with the uh, commentary that goes with it from the pilot. So let's see what uh, Donald Trump has to say here. I'm reading this through the camera viewfinder, so apologies again. Washington, President Donald Trump doesn't seem to be a believer of aliens or UFOs flying through Earth's atmosphere, although he's been briefed on them. ABC News, George Stephanopoulos... In a wide-ranging interview, asked Trump about recent news reports about Navy pilots spotting flying objects and what he made of the apparent UFO sightings. I want them to think whatever they think, Trump said, raising his eyebrows and slightly grinning before adding that he did not have one that he did have one really brief meeting on it. People are saying they're seeing UFOs. Do I believe it? Not particularly, he added. OK. Now, I'll leave a link to this article below so that you can you can read all of it if you want to, but basically it's more of the same. Um, <clears throat> from USA Today, and uh, it's very painful to read because it takes, you know, you, you scroll down a bit to read a bit and it doesn't move, and you try scrolling a bit more and it doesn't move, and then it will flick, and then you, you're on the you're completely wrong part of the page, so this is very, very difficult to, uh, very difficult to deal with USA Today online. But uh, anyway, I thought I'd... Uh, I thought I'd include that in this video just for uh, Ben Emlyn Jones because um, I know he's a big supporter of Trump and uh, uh, I, th I, thought I'd better, I thought I'd better let him know what Donald Trump's uh, real opinion is with regard to uh, the alien U, uh, ET alien uh, UFO situation. I think uh, the next time Ben is not going to uh, bother risking being beaten up and uh, he's not going to be shouting Trump and waving his flags around. OK, now let's go on to a clip that I should have included in the um, video yesterday, you know, where someone's got a what looks like a Tupperware bowl, a shallow Tupperware bowl, and they've cut square holes in it very badly, turned it upside down, and then <laughs> filmed it and said it was a UFO. Um, um, we're going to go on to a clip from the same video, which is um, Andrew Johnson talking about uh, the Secret Space Program Part 3. 
and uh, there is one uh, there is one interesting uh, one interesting uh, clip that uh, we're going to be looking at and we're going to be looking at uh, someone's explanation of that clip all right on with the next one right now uh, this is the uh, this is the clip that i really should have included with the tupperware maslin beach ufo yesterday but um, I look at these in sort of dribs and drabs. I don't watch all of these videos all in one go. Um, I usually just look at it while I'm having a bit of a coffee break or something. But uh, anyway, regardless, so I'll, uh, I'll include it here. So let's see what Andrew Johnson has got to say. Uh, the uh, sunset. And you see this object going below the glow line of the atmosphere. And then... Sorry, yeah, is it going below? Yeah. Anyway, there's a flash... And a thing shoots up, and then this object shoots off at high speed. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and that's yeah. been shown on TV yes. several yeah. times. Mm. It's quite a famous clip, this one. done by Jack Kasher, and that was featured in the uh, 1999 Riddle of the Sky documentary, not talked mm. much about since. Richard Hoagland also did an analysis of that, and that's what... <laughs> Actually, I might take a look at uh, Richard uh, C. Hogwash's uh, analysis of that. Uh, R Richard Hogwash, of course, another famous science fiction peddler. Um, OK, let's continue... On YouTube, he did recorded that thing in '93. Jack Cash's report came out the following year. He does measurements. He worked out how fast these things are travelling. He, de he dismisses the explanations of it being ice crystals. They wrote to senators to get an investigation going. Nothing really happened. Uh, nothing really happened because there is nothing to the crazy extraterrestrial spacecraft theory. Sorry about the shaking. I'm holding the camera with my left hand. <clears throat> whilst operating the computer, or pressing the little key on the computer with the right hand. They did get responses, I mentioned that in the book. If you read Jack Cash's report, again, mm. very good. Uh, very thorough, very comprehensive. I highly recommend that you read and watch this, mm. his interview. But in that interview he says that he worked, um, I think he said he worked, he worked for NASA before. He'd already worked for NASA. Mm. He, did, he had a top secret clearance. Um, now, I've... I, I'm not a member of LinkedIn, so I can't get um, uh, Dr. Cash's entire profile. I did look at another site. It might be the MUFON site. He's uh, something to do with MUFON. And there's uh, quite a bit of academic stuff in there where he's teaching, but um, there's no mention of him working for NASA. So I don't know if anyone knows if that's fact or fiction. Maybe they could leave a comment below uh, if there's any evidence of uh, Dr. Casher working for NASA and having a top-secret clearance. Yes. Okay. And he says in this documentary, it's quite funny, hey, and again, he's sort of questioning a lot because he says, I wrote this report and it was so secret even I couldn't read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, OK. He wrote a report that was so secret that even he couldn't, uh, he couldn't read it. <laughs> and I think Andrew Johnson is actually waking up a bit here because he says, uh, yes, we might, we might actually question this report because, he says, he wrote a, a, a report that was so, so secret he couldn't read it. I mean, how likely is that really? OK, well, let's just have a quick look at that fairly famous bit of footage. Now, on the Andrew Johnson... On the Andrew Johnson video, I think they've done something with the speed. This looks a little faster to me. It's just running the same thing over and over again. It's a lot easier to see in this that uh, in this clip that all of these other all of these other objects are also in motion. If you look at all of these little white dots, they're all, they're all in motion. It's not just the one they're calling the UFO. The UFO that's darting away. And there's a streak coming up here. I'm sitting in a funny position, so, you know, I haven't got the DTs or anything. It's a bit shaky, the camera. <clears throat> um, 
couple of things to consider here. Um, I think the Doctor comes to the conclusion that uh, these are all ET, all these moving objects are ET spacecraft. Now, um, first thing to consider, I suppose, is that only one of them seems to be reacting to the flash. Um, now, if I was the pilot of one of these ET spacecraft and one of my colleagues, my squadron colleagues, had just been shot at, I just would I would react to that. These would be darting around all over the place, getting out of the way. Um, the flash, uh, I think they're suggesting, is you know coming from from the planet. Um, if that was the case, this would be you know a thousand miles across. The world and his dog is going to know that you've got a top secret plasma cannon or whatever it happens to be. Um, you know, a cannon isn't is not going to be. If this is some sort of super space weapon, you're not going to get a flash and then a second later. A projectile particle beam weapons are pretty much instantaneous you know they, they the, the, the particles travel at the speed of light laser beams you know that sort of stuff I mean, not you know, invisible light laser weapons they all travel at the speed of light there's going to be no delay between the flash and the projectile so you know whatever that is it's got nothing whatsoever to do with uh, any kind of weapon being fired on the ground you're not going to get a cannon flash and then the projectile um, it's just not uh, not going to happen. So uh, I think the uh, the NASA explanation um, for for this being ice particles and this just being a manoeuvring motor firing um, is is perfectly reasonable. I don't see uh, I don't see what's wrong with that at all. Okay, well let's just have a look at. Uh, so the other thing to consider too is that um, you know if, if alien spacecraft turned up, the worst thing you could possibly do is attack them, because we would have no <laughs> no realistic defence against aliens. If they can get here, they're going to have weapons technology that would uh, clean us up very quickly and effectively. We would have no realistic defence against attacking aliens. Um, so. You know, if alien spacecraft turned up, we would ask them what they want, and uh, we would only engage them if we absolutely had to. Personally, I don't think we, it would come to we'd ever come to a shooting war with aliens because I think if aliens wanted the planet, they'd take it biologically. They would. Uh, there wouldn't be a shot fired. They'd just spray some, spray some stuff into the atmosphere that'd kill everyone, and uh, and then they'd just move in. Now let's just have a quick look at uh, Dr. Kasher's. Uh, report. Andrew Johnson says this is a sort of comprehensive report. Now he's a PhD physicist, Dr. Kasher, so it's a bit of math in this. He does like his math. Got that. So it's laid out uh, qu quite uh, like a like a professional document. He might submit for a. A peer review, you know, what do you think of this, guys? So he's got an abstract here describing the events, a description of events. Now, where it gets a little bit wobbly, well, there's two things in here that, that show us that um, regardless of his uh, impressive looking graphs and uh, his uh, impressive looking math, this report is worthless. It's meaningless. Uh, and that is, uh, here we go, this is description of events and then what he's doing. I trace the trajectories of several of the glowing objects and, the two, and of the two streaks by placing a transparency over a 13 inch television set. The results are displayed in these figures. So he's showing some graphs. So how he's come to his conclusions is he's got the um, he's he's looked at this uh, uh, video tape. He's played the video tape on a television, a 13-inch television. He's then put a matrix over the television screen. He tells us, I think, uh, what size this matrix is. Yeah, research, research equipment and scientific methodology tells us exactly how he's doing it. And he says uh, the software uses a 60, 60, 40 by 480 pixel grid that is placed over the picture and the X and Y coordinates 
Uh, the, uh, this is used for um, uh, plotting the movements of creatures, little critters, but uh, he's decided that he can use the same methodology for plotting the uh, uh, the paths of these objects. Now, where the, where the, where the problem arrives here, uh, arises here is he can plot the x and y coordinates using a 640 by 480 pixel grid, 480 pixel grid. So he's got a 13 inch television and he's put a grid over the screen with 640 by 480 pixels. And he's using this same methodology that they're using for looking at his colleagues looking at bacteria or whatever it is. Now, the problem with this methodology is that um, a television screen is displaying a two-dimensional image of a three-dimensional scene. So, you know, where's the z-axis? There's no z-axis plot there. Um, television screens generally aren't flat. He did this in 1994. Television screens were cathode ray tubes. They're not flat LCD screens like we have today. They, they were curved, so the pixels aren't going to be um, you know, perfectly shaped pixels. They're not going to be round across the as he stretches the as he stretches the thing across the curvature of the television screen, so the pixels will be distorted. Um, and because it, he's looking at a two-dimensional image of a three-dimensional scene, if one of the objects moves away from the camera, it will appear stationary on his grid. I think he he says somewhere in here that uh, one of the objects is stationary for you know half a second or less than half a second, but it might just be you know the rocket motor is just just giving it <laughs> giving it a little bit of a uh, bit of a shove and it's moving directly away from the camera, so it will appear motionless for that less than half a second. So the methodology is poor. Um, I would say that um, yeah, this is uh, this is really not worth the paper it's written on this this report to be perfectly honest and if we go down to there is actually a paragraph or a sentence in here that tells us that this is all very impressive looking you know he's got one to five proofs that it's not it's, it's not ice particles but he's proved nothing because if we go down to you know he's got his first proof here as I say this all looks very professional he's got graphs and he's got his math in there but um, the methodology is flawed. Um, and uh, if we go down to second proof, you know, all this work for nothing, third proof, and uh, fourth proof, fourth proof, fifth proof, fifth proof. Some considerations, con conclusions and conclusions and ramifications. Okay. Uh, so <clears throat> we can sort of ignore the first paragraph really just let's, let's have a look at the second paragraph first let us examine the possible accelerations involved now this is the important bit I have not been able to determine from the tape just how far away from the shuttle the main object was <laughs> since the Shuttle was about 355 miles above the Earth when the film was taken. The horizon would be slightly more than 1,700 miles away. Obviously, the craft, the craft he's calling it, <laughs> was somewhere between the shuttle and this distance. So he's got no idea what he's looking at. He doesn't know if he's looking at a small object close to the shuttle or a big object at a distance from the shuttle. That one sentence. I've not been able to determine from the tape just how far away from the, sh from the shuttle the main object was since the shuttle was about 355 miles above the Earth when the film was taken. The horizon would be slightly more than 1700 miles away I haven't actually checked that we'll take that for granted that he's right obviously the craft was somewhere between the shuttle and this distance two sentences that show the rest of this document to be worthless he's got no numbers for, the, for he's got no figures for the main where have all these figures come from he's just made them up let's assume this let's assume that he's got no he's got no figures relating no specific figures relating to what he's calling the main object 
and uh, I think they're pretty obviously are ice particles they're all moving around um, as I said before uh, the methodology is flawed he's putting a pixelated grid across a curved television screen he's looking at a two-dimensional image of a three-dimensional scene so he's only plotting two axes not uh, not the third axis um, so this really is not worth the paper it's written on this uh, this dr. Um, Hasher report sorry Andrew but uh, it's even more, even more uh, drivel. Absolute rubbish, in fact. Okay, well, uh, uh, yeah, don't call us, uh, don't call us, Doc. We'll call you. Um, <laughs> if you've uh, if you've struggled through this video all the way to this point, um, as always, thanks for watching. As I said, I don't watch all these videos in one go, so. Uh, if anything else comes up that I think might be worth a mention, I'll um, I'll do another video, starring Andrew Johnson. Difficult to debunk, <laughs> Andrew Johnson. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Maybe I'll uh, catch you again.